In this video, we're going to start looking at the notion of integration and integrability. So let's suppose that we've got a function f from the closed interval a to the real numbers. And here we're assuming that f is a bounded function. So there's a way to do this if f is not a bounded function, but we'll maybe cross that bridge a little bit later. So the first thing that we want to do is define a partition of a, b, that closed interval. And so there are a bunch of different definitions of partitions of sets. And I would say that if you're looking at a set theoretic definition of a partition of a set, this is not the one that you want to look for. This is really specific to the notion of integration. So it is a finite set of numbers, which we'll call P. So X0, X1 up to Xn that satisfy three properties. So xi is less than xi plus one. So that means these numbers are increasing and x zero is equal to a and xn is equal to b. So the smallest one is a and the largest one is b. So notice that's gonna partition this interval a, b into all of these pieces. Okay, next we wanna set little m i equal to the enthemum of f of x as x goes on this ith subinterval, so it's between xi minus 1 and xi, and then capital M sub i is the supremum of f as x goes on the same subinterval. Finally, we'll define these things called the lower and upper sums, and these depend on the function and the partition. So that's why I've put this dependence here and here. So L, F, P, in other words, the lower sum of F with respect to P is the sum as I goes from one to N of little m I times this difference X I minus X I minus one. And then the upper sum U F P is going to be the sum as I goes from one to N of capital M I and then times this difference X I minus X I minus one. So this is like, as small as the function is on the subinterval and then the length of the subinterval. And this is as large as the function can be on the subinterval um, times the length of the subinterval. Okay, let's maybe go ahead and look at an example, like a really basic example of this, and then we'll move into some other important notions towards the definition of integrability. Okay, so let's look at maybe the function f of x equals x. So that's perhaps as simple as it gets to provide an interesting example. And let's say we have the interval one comma five. And then furthermore, we're going to need a partition of that interval. The partition can be any finite set of numbers that's increasing starting at one and ending at five. So let's maybe go ahead and take this as our partition. So we'll take one, three halves, and then next we'll take two, four, five. So it's interesting to notice here that these are not equal in length. You know, and that's an important property that we are allowing over here. Unlike generally when you look at this in a calculus two type class, you just break this guy up, this interval up into n equal pieces and then maybe take some limit as n goes to infinity. So that's not exactly what we're doing here. We're doing something a little bit more general. Okay, so let's maybe calculate this LFP and this UFP. We're gonna use the fact that F of X is an increasing function. Let's maybe get a picture going. So let's say we've got, we need points between one and five. So here we have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's good. That means we need points between one and five here too. Three, four, five. That's good. We know what this function looks like. It's gonna be a line from that point one one to this point up here five five so that is the graph of our function and now let's put our partition in there so this point right here which is one is like our x zero this point out here is like our x sub n but let's see it's x naught x1 x2 x3 x4 so this is like our x4 so let's maybe go ahead and point out that this is equal to one and this one is equal to five. And so next is three halves. So that'll be X one, which is right here. And then two is right after that. So that'll be X two, which is right here. And then we're skipping three, four is out here. So this is our X three. 
So this is the kind of picture we have. Now let's maybe do our lower sum in this uh, peach color. So we want to do L, F, P. Let's do it geometrically. So this is going to be the infimum of our function on each of these subintervals. But lucky for us, we know that this function is increasing and it's really easy to find the values. And in fact, this is just going to give us the left hand endpoint approximation for the area under the curve. Okay, so we've got some sort of picture like this. So our LFP will be this area right here. So now we can calculate all of those parts. So notice the height of this first rectangle is one and the width is half. So this is gonna be equal to one times a half plus the height of this next rectangle is three halves and the width is a half. So that's gonna be plus three halves times half. Then the height of the next rectangle is two and the width is two. So that's gonna be plus two times two. And then finally, the height of the last triangle is um, four. So my scale isn't great, but it's four and my width is one. So I've got plus four times one. Okay, so let's see what that gives us in the end. So that's gonna give us a half plus three quarters plus eight. Okay, cool. So a half plus three quarters is gonna be something like one and a quarter plus eight is going to be nine and a quarter. But let's see, that's gonna be equal to 37 over four. So that's our lower sum. Now let's maybe go ahead and also look at our upper sum. Maybe we'll do that in this purple color. So our upper sum is going to take the supremum of the function on each of these sub intervals. But since this is an increasing function, that's just gonna be the right hand endpoint. So here we have U, F, P. So we'll have that be the area of this rectangle, which I'm drawing in and then this next purple rectangle, and then this next purple rectangle, and then finally, this is the last purple rectangle. <clears throat> Great, so now we can, again, find the area of each of those rectangles with just a width times height. So let's see, the first one has um, height of, let's see, it's gonna be one and a half because it's through this endpoint, and then it's gonna be width half so here we're gonna have three halves times half plus, so this next one has width half and height two. So that's gonna be a half times two. This next one has width two and height four. So that's plus two times four. And then finally, this last one has width one and height of five. Again, my scale is not perfect, but we have five times one over here. Okay, great. So now we can add all of these together. So notice we're going to get three quarters. Then we've got a half times two. So that's one plus this is going to be eight plus five, which is 13. So we've got three quarters plus 13. But let's see what that is. So three quarters plus So that's gonna be 52 over four plus three over four. So that's gonna be 55 over four. Okay, so there's our lower sum and our upper sum. Okay, so let, let's maybe stop here and we'll come back in the next video and talk about refinements of partitions.